your training video. In this video, I will walk you through hosting your own classes or your own Zoom meetings. If you're like me and you're finding yourself out of your traditional classroom and now in a virtual classroom and don't feel comfortable with navigating through Zoom or using all of the tools, please follow this video or listen to this video in order to learn all the tips and tricks in order to host the best class or Zoom meeting for you and your team or participants. So please follow along as I guide you into using Zoom and all of the wonderful tools that it has. Now, when we first log into Zoom, what we're gonna see is this wonderful platform that we're looking at. It is this classroom right here. Now, the first thing that's gonna pop up is this screen right at the top that I'm toggling with. Now, this screen is basically a joined audio screen. It allows me to join the audio or for have people listen to me via my computer. Now, it is also great because the first time that you ever join a Zoom meeting, you can test your speaker or your microphone. So if you select test speaker and microphone, you can actually hear a ringtone and say, hmm, okay, my speaker is working, yes. And yes. A playback. Playback. Yes, it's working. Very good, it's a replay. So now everything looks good, I can join with computer audio. Now, once everything looks good, I can go ahead and select this blue button, join with computer audio. Now, let's say I don't wanna to have to do this again or every single time I join my meeting, I can select this little square over here at the bottom right-hand corner, I'm sorry, at the bottom left-hand corner, and we can go ahead and automatically join with our computer audio, not having to do this step every single time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and join with computer audio, and now I am in my classroom. As you can see, I already have a student here on my left-hand side waiting for me. Now, I am currently in gallery view. What does that mean? It means that I can see everybody at the same time. All of the participants are on the screen at the same time, including myself. If I want to change my view to speaker view, in other words, I only want to see the person who is talking, I can click on the upper right hand corner and select speaker view. When I select speaker view, it will only be the person who's talking. Now you're probably asking yourself, if it's only the person who's talking, why aren't you the person in big, right? Well, the reason why is because I am the host, right? So I'm not gonna see myself bigger. I'm only gonna see whoever I am meeting with. That would be the student, right? In this case, they don't have their camera open, but if they did, we would be able to see them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to gallery view in order for us to be able to see each other and connect with one another. And that's one of the most important things via Zoom and having the different gallery options and explaining them to your students because that way they are able to see each other and they can feel like something more traditional rather than being in a virtual classroom where you know we're just not paying attention or maybe we have our cameras turned off. So make sure to encourage you know having their cameras turned on during the class to create a more engaging atmosphere. Now, the next thing that I wanna teach you are all of the icons that we can use at the bottom of the screen. Now, when we go all the way to the bottom of the screen, we're gonna start with the left hand bottom in the corner, right? And what we're gonna see is actually a little microphone and that is the mute or unmute button. So right now I am talking, but if I wanted to stop talking and have nobody hear me in the class, I can go ahead and mute myself by selecting it. You guys can hear me because I'm using secondary audio to record. However, if you were in your classroom, no one could hear you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on and now I can see the little green microphone is moving. Everyone in the class can hear me, all right? In that little microphone, you have an arrow, you can go ahead and select it, but it's really if you want to test the speaker, if something isn't working, anything that you have that's going on, there are some audio settings that you can select. And basically here, again, you can test your speaker and test your microphone. You can select to join the computer, um, the audio by computer again, so that you don't have to do that again. So if you forgot that little square box at the beginning, don't fret because you can come here to audio settings and click on that box to always join through audio, through always join through the computer audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit this out. Now the next icon following that microphone is that little camera icon. Here I can start or stop my video. I can start or stop my video. Right now, you guys can see me, but if I were to select stop, 
you can no longer see me. You can hear me, but you can no longer see me. Again, especially if you're the professor or the teacher, I don't encourage this because when you want to create engagement, the best thing to do is to have that face-to-face, -face, right? It creates that quality. It creates that wrapper. So make sure that you are using the cameras at all times. What I do encourage all of my teachers is one of the first things you do when you get into your classroom, besides saying good morning or good afternoon and introducing yourself to your students, um, is of course, and the parents is of course, if they're in the class, is of course telling them to please mute their microphones. Now, why do I say this? If all of your students have their microphones turned on at the same time, there will be a very strong echo and a lot of background noise that can be disruptive to other students. So please tell them to go ahead and shut off their mics, Tell them to find their chat box, which we will be talking about shortly, as well as tell them to raise and lower their hands. Again, raise and lower their hands. And we will talk about how to do that as well as there will be a video for students later on that you can share on how they can do these things. Okay, so the point of having a discussion is doing so in a way that we're not disruptive to other people. So just like in a traditional classroom where we're raising our hands, giving each other turns, we can do the same thing here on the platform. So make sure to be using that feature. Again, we'll talk more about that later. Now, in the little camera right next to that wonderful little arrow, when we click on it, there's one of my favorite things, and that's the choose virtual background setting. This means we can change the backgrounds, right, of what it looks like behind us. How great is this? I am all of a sudden at the beach. And for those of you guys who have kiddos in the class, um, I'm a professor in college. I teach the older ones. Um, but if you have little kiddos, this is a great thing to use if you want to make them feel like they're not stuck at home all day and kind of give them a perspective of, hey, it's still summer, we're still going to have a good time, no matter if all these bad things are going on. So really fun things that you can do. And when you want to remove it, again, go back to that little arrow, go back to choose virtual background, and you can select none. You can select none. You can also click to add an image or a video that you find and it can play in the back of you. How wonderful is that? So you can make it to whatever theme is going on for that day. So you can really get creative with these backgrounds. Now, the next thing that you wanna learn is you have a little person right here at the bottom with a plus sign and it says invite. That's because you can invite people to the meeting. So right now under my contacts, the reason why I have all of these contacts is because I'm using my mdc.edu email. So all of the people that are registered under an mdc.edu email are under this contact list, right? So I can see everybody that I work with, everyone on my platform. Let's say that you don't have that, right? Because you're using a generic email. Well, never fret because there are other ways that you can invite or share your meeting. One is to copy the URL. Another is to copy an invitation. And again, you just click and it's already copied. All you have to do is to paste it wherever it needs to go. And last but not least, you have an email. In this email selection, you can actually select where you want to email the invitation from and email as many people the invitation as you like. So there's many ways that you can send out invitations to your meeting and tell students about the way they can participate in your classes. Now, right next to that icon, we have a very important icon, probably one of the most important when you are managing a class. The reason why it's because it's exactly that. It allows you to manage a class. When we select manage participants, I can see who is in my classroom and I can manage them. So if let's say my student had no idea how to mute or unmute themselves, I can do that. I could do that. Right now, my student is muted. They are not talking. But as you see, they don't have a camera. They have that little camera icon with a slash through it. That means their camera is not on. You can actually click on more and ask to start video. So of course, it will never open their camera without their authorization for privacy issues, but you can ask them if they're not sharing. So if you have a student who's ignoring you or he hasn't turned on their camera yet, right? You can go ahead and ask them to start that video and make sure that they join the class. Again, you can mute people. So again, it would pop up just like this and I can go ahead and mute them. So if there is a student or a parent who doesn't understand how it works, how to mute their computer, they're having trouble, while you're teaching them, you can mute them so that they're not disrupting others, right? Here also, if the student happened to raise their hands, and I'll go ahead and have my student raise their hands, 
I am going to see it. I'm seeing it here in the corner of their video. So they have their hand and I can click lower hands. And I'm also going to see it in that manage participants list and I can lower their hand here too. So again, tell your classes to please make sure that they mute their microphones and to either raise and lower their hands and teach them to lower their hands. They can lower them as well. Right where they clicked raise, they can go ahead and select lower. And they're going to find that in the little raise hand icon at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Again, there will be a video for them as well. Um, for right now, this video is for you guys, so you can learn how to navigate everything first. But again, they can lower their hand to encourage it so it doesn't look like their hand is still raised and you have trouble thinking, oh, did I answer the student? I forgot if I already answered them. Are they raising their hand again? So encourage them to do both. So you're not always having to manage everything and everyone. It can become exhausting, right? Teach them to be independent, just like in the classroom, how they lower their hands. Now, when we... Exit from here, another important icon is the one right here in the middle, which is our share screen. It's our share screen. In the little corner right next to it, we have that arrow that's basically next to most of the icons. It allows us to have more settings. In this arrow, we can select two things. Either one participant can share the screen, only I can, or multiple participants can share the screen. So you can share your screen and so can your students. So you can pair some. You can compare something side by side at the same time. How wonderful is that? Now, I can't do it with the student I have currently, and you're going to ask why. The reason is, is because they are on a mobile device. Please keep in mind that if your student is on a mobile device, they will not be able to share screens simultaneously. They will only be able to do it one person at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have some options. I can share my desktop. I can also share my whiteboard. You can even select to share your iPhone via AirPlay and via cable if you have a cable for your iPad or your iPhone. Now, the whiteboard is great because when you share it, you can write on it, right? Right now I have this little tool clicked right over here. It's the draw tool. And when I click it, look at all these wonderful selections. I can make lines. I can make arrows. I can make shapes. I can draw a thinner line. I can also select things to move. So I can move the shapes I've drawn. I can go ahead and write text. I can create stamps like little hearts and little stars. I can create a spotlight so it tells me where I'm pointing to. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about that. I can erase and I can select what I want to erase. I can select. I can also clear, so I can clear all the drawings. I can clear my drawings, only what I've done, and I can even clear the viewer's drawings, only what they've done. Other platforms do not allow you to do this. I use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra and it's fantastic. However, I wish it had this. So take advantage that you can actually even save your drawing. You could save it, so the whiteboard could be saved for later on to show to your students. So if you're a math teacher, how fantastic is this for you for solving calculations? Now you can even change the color here under format and the line width, make it very small. Okay, and I'm erasing now, so I'll go back to that drawing. But look how thin my line is. And one of the greatest things is that my participants could also draw as well. They could also draw as well. So when they were draw, they will be drawing, they could come up on the screen, whatever they draw as well, whatever they draw as well. Now, to exit this, I'm going to go ahead and click exit. And now I am back to my screen. I can now see myself again, right? Um, right next to that screen share, we have a chat button. This is another very important instrument because we can chat with everyone. We can also chat with just that student. So for those of you who have parents, who want to talk privately or even older students from college that maybe want to talk about their grades. This is great because it's a way for you guys to just talk to each other without no one in the class having to know what's in the conversation. Or again, another way for everybody in the class to participate. So again, tell them to look for the raise hand icon as well as the chat box because they can input their answers without having to yell them out and disrupt the rest of the class. So right next to that, we have another great button. It's that record button. Um, I record all of my lectures because I like to have students go back to them. 
If you like to do the same, you can go ahead and select record. Once you are finished recording, and you can pause it as well, but once you are finished, go ahead and click that little square to stop it. And now you've, you're done. It says the recorded file will be converted when the meeting ends. So once the meeting ends, they're going to convert the video and it will save. I'll show you guys once we exit the meeting. Now, last but not least, we have something wonderful that I love, especially for those of you teaching the younger ones. It's called the reactions. And in this icon with the happy face, because it's to make everyone happy, we have two things that for the little ones especially is really handy. You have a thumbs up and they can use it too. They can give their friends, their classmates a thumbs up and cheer each other on during difficult times, as well as a clap. Good job, right? Really good. Even you guys, for your students, you can do this as well, right? For the older ones, if they answered a question, maybe they're the only ones participating. Hey, awesome. Thank you so much for joining and participating in the class. Now, again, if there are any questions about Zoom, I would be more than happy to help, but it's a very easy tool to navigate and it's a great resource to host a class. If you wanna host a class effectively, Zoom, Blackboard, there's also Microsoft Meeting Room. There's many different ways to host a class. This one in particular, I think is very useful. And I know that many of the teachers out there are using Zoom right now. So if you have any other questions or would like for me to create any other videos, leave a comment in the box below and I would love to help you with anything you need. Again, it's my pleasure. I'm Professor Alvarez. This is another teacher training video. I'll see everyone next time.